Right, it's time for my blog, my weekly blog, and uh, <clears throat> of course the big thing that is, big news that is floating around the uh, mixed martial arts world at the moment, apart from the upcoming uh, UFN, of course is the, um, the death of uh, Evan Tanner, who was a uh, UFC middleweight champion at one point. Um, and he went on a an expedition, a camping expedition on his own in the desert and uh, something happened and he um, died. So um, that was uh, last week. Bit, bit shocking. Not quite sure what I make of um, a lot of people who who didn't really think that highly of Evan whilst he was alive but have suddenly appeared out of the woodwork um, you know since his death um, claiming things like he should be added to the Hall of Fame and I do in a way there's a there's a, there's a, a uh, an argument that could be used to say that uh, some of the people in the uh, Hall of Fame at the moment haven't really done very much in terms of their record or, or anything like that and yet they have been um, inducted. But in the same way there are people with, there are a lot of people with a, a, um, a higher calibre of uh, record and, and achievement than Evan that aren't and, and probably will never be um, uh, even thought of going, um, being inducted into the Hall of Fame. Now I'm just not completely sure how I feel about that because, you know, uh, there is a tendency, isn't there, I think, to have a little bit of a sort of, I don't know how to explain it, um, you know, he, he claimed he had a message for people, etc, etc, and you know, perhaps his death serves as a rather a, um, a unique way of getting his message across now with people that have sort of almost become militant um, on the on the uh, the upthrust of his death, so to speak. Um, so I would just, you know, I'm very sad it's happened. I didn't know him very well. I followed his blogs for a little bit, spoke to him once or twice online and that, that was about it. So I'm a little bit, you know, um, and whilst I, I think his message of, you know, service to others and uh, stuff like that is, is a good message and that every little person doing their, um, their best and stuff can uh, change the world, I would add to that that, you know, um, my personal belief is, of course, as a Christian, that that's, you know, us in our ourselves, um, we can't do it on our own and we need, you know, divine help in order to do that and, and you can be a very, very, very good person, do lots of good things and do lots of good works and not necessarily be saved. Um, you know, that's my own opinion on the matter. So I would just add to what he has said really and say that, you know, there's a, there's a, there's something else out there that's slightly more um, than just um, sort of self-sacrifice, I think. So, yes. Moving on, um, last week also uh, gave me a little bit of a, um, a shock because I, a lot of you will know that I, being English, I subscribe to Fighters Only magazine, which is the magazine, of course, founded by um, Ian Freeman, um, and now run by uh, an editor known as Hywell Teak, who's a um, uh, mixed martial arts journalist. And uh, I write to him quite a lot by email, um, feedback on various things that he does. Um, a lot of it in my own unique, constructive criticism type way. And um, I got an email saying, you know, have you uh, noticed that you are published by Fighters Only and have won, in fact, the um, 
Letter of the Month award. And I was like, well, actually, I hadn't. Even though I had the magazine and I sort of started, I'd not got that far. Now, I don't, wouldn't say that I had written with the intention of it being um, published and answered in that way. Um, but there we are. Um, perhaps a little word of uh, warning to people who would write, you know, just anything to to editors or journalists. They they can publish what you have have written. Um, so anyway, uh, the the bit that was chosen to be published was on one of the articles that he'd written on his notes from Ringside, sort of, um, uh, which is a, a thing that comes up every month, you know, and he writes about a different thing. Uh, as a journalist, from a journalist's point of view, and, and this one was how he'd love to see mixed martial arts take off in this country by um, a, a, a documentary that exposes everything about it, but how when people go to him he gets quite tired of, you know, what he considers um, these, these enthusiasts with, you know, a lot of enthusiasm but not really much in the way of actually um, practical uh, basis for doing it. Um, clamouring for his time on who they should interview and all that sort of stuff. And he was, you know, a little bit um, like, well, I can't really be bothered to help them sort of thing. So I just sent back word sort of saying, well, you know, if you're serious on helping, uh, on wanting to see these sort of documentaries happen, you actually have to, to give some of these people some help because you don't know what you do um, and how that might affect and how that might grow. You know. That the whole me covering the cage gladiator thing for MMAHitPit.com um, came out came about completely by you know uh, chance and doing a few random things which sort of got the attention of the right people you know um, and so you don't know how things would uh, would go anyway um, because of that uh, they sent me um, a prize which was a a t-shirt which I am wearing here so I just thought I'd I'd show you all my t-shirt which I'm quite pleased with. Um, it fits quite snugly, um, <laughs> though I'm quite portly, so there we are. Um, but uh, yeah, so, so that's my blog for this week, I think.